Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB test automation engineer certification. We are in chapter two talking about preparing for the test automation and we have covered all the tutorials from this chapter so far and it's time for us to see some quick sample questions from here to understand what could be the best way to tackle them. Well, to begin with, the very first question on our screen is the number one from the chapter two, and we are talking about what type of test automation is mainly performed in the staging environment. I think we should just recall the topics we just recently covered. Uh, this type of topic may have inverse or direct questions. Sometimes they can ask you what kind of uh, activities or test levels are best organized in which environment, and other way around, they can give you the activity and ask you which environment do you expect this to happen probably for the first time or well, well, where it is most recommended. So these are the type of questions we can really expect from such type of topics. So let's quickly check this out. So they are asking us uh, the, what type of test automation is mainly performed in the staging environment. So we have four options right here. Option A says component testing, B says performance efficiency testing and user acceptance testing. Uh, static analysis is option C and then we have integration testing. So indeed, uh, we have covered this as a part of our syllabus that when it comes to component testing, it is uh, basically performed in a build and development environment, which is certainly component uh, tests are considered to be the first initial level of tests. And they are small, concrete and very to the point. So we don't need a very heavy environment to perform them. Indeed, we don't have to wait till the uh, a very close to production environment is ready because that could be too late for us to identify the related issues or defects we can say so that's where the develop environment or build environment is something which is a, a lightweight environment and at the same time can be used to perform the basic unit component tests uh, which would help us to identify the anomalies right there and if i talk about the performance efficiency uh, the second option and uh, user acceptance testing indeed uh, this is not uh, the environment where uh, we can do that. Uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Yes, exactly. When it comes to staging environment, the non-functional test and acceptance testing can be very much performed because this is more of like a pre-production envir environment. And uh, these tests, that is performance efficiency, like uh, running a performance test with the load and uh, talking about user being uh, trying their uh, test to confirm the requirements can all be performed uh, right there. And that is where it makes a lot of sense that these tests can be pushed to the staging environments and that would be more important. Uh, if I talk about option C, it says static analysis and certainly static analysis, uh, which is uh, smoke testing, can be part of uh, any test environment. So we don't really have to worry about because static uh, analysis is a part of the code review and code review can be conducted whenever a code is checked in. So it's not necessary that you should do it in a particular environment only. If required, you can perform it in every single environment as well, which could be a quick check just to make sure that when things are being integrated together, there are no such anomalies or uh, deviations happening. However, we can technically have a discussion on this that once statically analyzed, why should I have this to be repeated again and again? So why should I say any environment? The reason is, uh, it may have contributing elements as we proceed to the next set of environments. So you may require to do a round of it, Inf including DevOps. So you say that this can happen at any point of time. So let's keep it to the syllabus. In reality, we may have our own decisions depending on the product and project characteristics. But when it comes to syllabus and examination, we need to adhere to what the syllabus is trying to say. OK, so we don't wait for a staging environment to conduct the static analysis and uh, when we talk about the integration testing, it is uh, certainly the test in a pre-production environment assess competence availability in the development environment. So in, indeed, uh, this is something uh, not waiting for the pre-prod environment to come into existence to perform this. So point being made is the initial level of tests like component integrations. And if I just go back a little more, I would say that there is a dedicated environment for every single level to be conducted what we have discussed. So this is not necessary that everything should be conducted into pre-prod and we, given that we have the understanding what con gets conducted in which environment, we should be sticking to that. And by saying that, the right answer to this particular question is, 
B, that is performance efficiency testing and user acceptance testing are mainly performed in the staging environment. So stick to the content. Sometimes the real world scenarios and real world uh, principles do stick and conflict with uh, uh, our you know, syllabus, what you're covering here. So it is very, very important for us to keep that aside and adhere to the information being discussed and uh, not to get conflicted because I keep getting a lot of comments on that. Many people do ask me that, uh, how is it even possible? That's not making sense to me. For sure, why not? Respecting all your inputs, but syllabus is the only key to get to the right answer. Let's move on to the next one, the option two. Uh, question number two says, in which environment uh, is a fully automated test suite uh, typically executes, executed against a release candidate for the first time? Now again, this is a not so tricky one, but we need to understand there are some keywords which are kind of going to distract you a little bit. For example, release is a keyword here. If you see, it says release candidate. So people would think about uh, pre-production as being the, you know, the last environment where we can check for things and then move it to production. But at the same time, they're saying a fully automated test suite, which is again, an area of concentration and to think about like, okay, not necessarily that first automation, fully automated test can only be executed in pre-prod before production. It can even be done earlier, right? So release is just a kind of catchy word, or I would say a diversion stating that, like you start thinking about the later stages rather than the earlier. But you have to think this entire discussion is about automation. So we must know when the first automated test can be executed in the given environments. So the options are very straightforward. Uh, we have pre-production uh, or staging environment, build environment, uh, the production on operational environment, integration test environment. I think it, it, it pretty clearly makes a lot of sense that pre-production is too late for us to perform these activities because a fully automated test can easily be performed uh, much earlier, given that they are talking about the functional aspects and uh, pre-production is more for alpha and beta kind of thing. So we don't really have to wait for pre-production that is too late for us to check for the basic functionalities of the system we have built. Same way, if I talk about option B, option B says build environment, which are for the early test, but the build environment is not uh, ready for more robust and test execution because mainly the progression testing are unstable to be automated. So it's not necessary that full automation is possible here. Partial automation for sure, but not fully automatically, right? Fully automation, fully automated test is not possible to do in the dev, dev environment. And if I further move to option C, that says uh, production. Production, we should keep it very straightforward. It's uh, typically uh, the final checks which you want to do uh, regarding the operational environment, compatibility checks, or coexistence issues of with other applications. That is what you can do in the production and we keep it limited as much as possible. Or if I talk about maintenance, I can do that post-release in the production environments. However, this is not my first attempt to make an automation test. It's too late. Like production, I can do maintenance tests and other things, but uh, that's not the first time when we run a fully automated test. So we are left with just one option, that is option D, and it says uh, integration or test environment. Indeed, the test environment is the environment where you can do a full-fledged automated test executed right there for the first time so keeping it to the point the right answer for this particular question is d that is integration or otherwise called as test environment is the environment where we run a fully automated test for the first time okay so that's how we have to consolidate everything what we know about it and at the same time we need to bring things back to justify ourselves that why the other options or why other environments are not so relevant. So you need to identify and recall the characteristics of each and every environment and then try to correlate that am I making sense or is the release word only important here or we are even talking about a fully automated, automated test to be executed for the first time. Let's move on to the next question and the next question we have is number three which is a little bit of scenario driven and it says uh, you're working for an IT company which is developing a built an Android based car multimedia system. The software contains several components working together. Developers are following the test driven development approach. After the development of the software, it is delivered to another IT company 
which integrates the software with the hardware element and sells them together to the car manufacturer. Which of the following should be considered during capturing the test automation requirement? Again, given the scenario, it's pretty much clear we are talking about a TDD framework, we are talking about embedded testing here, which is software plus uh, hardware, and there could be multiple levels of testing which will be conducted to make that the final product is shippable. So uh, you may have some of the understanding from the scenario as usual, which you need to extract as you read them, and then rest totally depends on the given options because options will talk about at the end of the day that what exactly they want to know. So as they say, the last statement here is, uh, which of the following should be considered during capturing the test automation requirements? So what are they that we can only come to know by option? So let's start reading them. Option A says, uh, it is important for the test automation approach to support component testing. Uh, indeed, I, I, we should consider that because component testing is performed by the developing ID company. And as you see that, not a uh, development team is building something which is going to another team and they're embedding it together. So for my part, it is very important for me that how much automation I can do because the question is about the automation context, right? They're trying to ask you how, what the considerations to take into account for automation, right? So of course, I would talk about the component testing, can, how much it can be automated, and that should be one of my key requirements to be taken into account. Let's move to option B. Option B here says, should the test automation approach support beta testing? Now, beta testing is certainly not being performed here as per the given scenario. We see that there's a system integration kind of test is happening so far, what we understand, and then we are selling it, right? So there's nothing uh, acceptance testing being not performed here because there's no customer and they have not specified in this scenario that customer is doing an acceptance testing and alpha and beta will take place. So. Let's not just jump to the conclusion by having a common understanding about it, right? Let's move to option C. Option C says, is it important for the test automation approach to support the testing of the software in as many different types of cars as possible? Again, that's a little tricky thing because the testing uh, of as many different types of cars are possible uh, uh, is just performed by the integration ID company because it's not us because we are developing a component and shipping it to the another company to do that. So we may not be responsible as a developing IT company, right, to be responsible for testing on the end environments or end operational environments. So the scenario, going back quickly to that, the scenario clearly says that you're working for an IT company which is developing a built-in Android-based car multimedia system and then you hand it over to another IT company which integrates this to sell it together to the car manufacturers. They're not selling it to the end user, they're selling it to car manufacturers. So it, either it will be IT company or the manufacturers who will do this, right? Let's move to option D. Uh, it says which tester roles should be supported by the test automation approach. Now that makes a little sense because automated component tests are designed and executed by the developers. So we must have that area of scope identified that who will be doing, how much we will be doing, and who will be responsible for it. So as developers are going to do this, the accountability and responsibility must be identified. So we must be clear with that requirement that who will be doing these component tests and uh, then they will have the responsibility of automating it. So D makes pretty much sense. Let's go to our last option that is E. Option E says, uh, is it important for the test automation approach to support? the mobile application store approval. Again, uh, test automation approach to support the mobile application store approval is not being performed. As far as it is specified somewhere in the scenario that we are talking about the mobile application as well or a particular level to do that or some kind of scenario statement which makes that there is a particular environment which we need to talk about or scenario to talk about, we should not consider anything outside the boundaries, okay? So keep it restricted, keep it to the point, and just limit your uh, thought process so that you don't get confused. And with that, concluding, given that there are five options here, we need to select two right answers. And the right answers to this particular question are, option A, uh, is it important for the test automation approach to support component testing? And B, sorry, D, which testers roles should be supported by the test automation approach? So. There are a few 
key criteria and key information which will always be highlighting to you that what should be the right answer for a given scenario, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.